afternoon, everyone. Phil Brown here with NextGen Cam. How often have you been machining out a mold or a complex 3D part that requires machining of internal fillets? Well, this week we're going to cover a newer toolpath that comes in the machining extension that makes cleaning up the internal corners a breeze using the corner toolpath. Let's get into it. Okay, so now that you can see I've already done my steep and shallow toolpath with my 3 8 ball end mill on this actual mold, I'm actually going to do one more thing, which is kind of a quick tip for all of you, is we're going to go ahead and we're going to say inspect, and I'm going to do a minimum radius analysis. And what that's going to allow me to do is define the minimum radius based on those dimensions on my part. So I'm going to increase it a little bit here and then select my body. But as you can see now, I have that ability to set a maximum threshold and then reduce it based on what I want. So one thing I like to do is let's say I want to look at everything that is going to be less than a 3 16 diameter tool or radius, I should say in this case. Everything still shows up, as you can see, in red. But now what if we take that by half, going down one size smaller? Again, we're getting smaller and smaller here and just narrowing down what tool is going to reach where at the end of the day. Again, you could fine tune this by bringing this down slowly until you actually break that threshold. Again, this makes it very easy. In this case, we're going to need less than a 031, I assume, end mill. And I can go ahead and type that in here. So again, the moment we get to 030, it looks like 029 might be the magic thing. Again, inch metric does not matter. Again, very, 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 very handy tool, as you can see, to just go out there and actually plug in nothing more than maybe a tool radius or diameter, depending on how you do the math, and from there triggering whether or not you can machine certain areas. Nice thing about it also is you can see I can turn it on, turn it off as needed to make those assumptions inside the software. All right, let's go to our corner tool path and start to set things up. So I went ahead and clicked my corner tool path, and just like a previous video we did, if you guys don't know this trick, this will be a new trick to you, I always like to hit OK first time through on a tool path. So as you're seeing, it's telling me the reference tool has not been selected. So if we go ahead and hit OK, we jump to our next menu, and this is where we have some new technology happening with rest machining. Rest machining now is actually asking for a physical tool to reference what it's doing. Kind of like when you do actually a probe geometry tool path, and it's asking you for a path to determine stock wall and things of that nature. I'm actually going to go out and I'm going to pick my tool. And this tool that we're going to pick is actually going to be our large tool that we used prior to to determine rust machining. So as you see, I'm pulling tool 19. I'm hitting select. And then with that, I'm going to hit OK again. Notice how I get another error. Well, that error is being triggered by the fact that it's still trying to use the last tool used for the path itself, right? So again, as if we hit OK and we go back to our tool, as you can see, I'm trying to reference rust machining of a 3 8 tool for a 3 8 tool. So let's go ahead and swap that out for something smaller. So again, we're going to go into our 3 16 tool. We're going to hit select. And then this time we're going to go ahead and hit OK. So why that calculates, we're going to notice that quite a few things are going to happen based on our model, what it's trying to do, and what it's looking for. Again, the great thing is by actually setting up this tool path for the corners or the internal fillets, however you look at it, it's using kind of a steep and shallow mentality and mindset. So again, as you can see, is it's actually doing a little bit of a different strategy in the steep area versus the shallow area. Again, we don't want to plunge that tool down past a certain angle. We would like to switch to being able to blend it left and right. Some of you that may notice this is I have a tool that is sticking out a mile. If you didn't know this, you could actually very quickly get the path on your part by staying in three axis and then later swap that tool out and go to full five axis if that's what you need. Again, the key element here is I wanted to get a path on the part and I wanted to start to look at how these strategies actually work. I'm going to go ahead and actually turn off my lead and link so that we could just see the path on the part at the end of the day. So again, a couple different strategies happening and let's look at that in the tool path and why that's happening. So if we actually go to our passes tab, you're going to notice this looks extremely familiar to anyone and everybody that's ever used steep and shallow, right? So we have a threshold angle. We're going to start with the top and work our way down. But now when we get into the steep area, it's asking us 
do we want to actually go across the part? Do we want to go along with constant step over or along with maximum step over? Again, this is very handy when you're really trying to blend these corners and get everything set up inside the software. So again, I like the across strategy usually at first. Once we start diving deeper, if you were going to go from a pre-finish to a final finish, you may change that based on those parameters, right? So again, as moving down, you still have the lovely both ways. Going through, setting your step down, or your step over, I should say, on the steep area. And then lastly is you could do up and down milling. So again, as if we look at that tool path, we're leaning down and arcing in, and then we're coming back across and out, right? So we are maintaining kind of a down milling strategy based on that. So again, fully customizable at the end of the day. If I really wanted to start getting crazy with it, again, that mindset of pre-finish, we're going to say both ways. I'm also going to say both up and down. And again, that shallow pass area is going to be the exact kind of same. So based on anything and everything that you all are doing at the end of the day, this tool path works almost identical to steep and shallow, but it gives you a lot more control at the end of the day on just blending in your surfaces and your tight tolerance areas. So again, there's that tool path coming back. You're going to notice here we have one lead in now. We come across our part back and forth, fully adjustable and fully customizable at the end of the day. So if you would like to actually try out this strategy and you do not have the machining extension, keep in mind you have the ability to always go up to your extensions button in the top right corner here and start a free seven-day trial inside of Fusion 360. If you would like a much more custom one-on-one -on -one demo, feel free to use the link below to schedule your demo by just clicking on that email address, fusion360 at nextgencam.com. And myself or my associate, Umer, from my video last week would love to do a demonstration and investigate whether or not this one toolpath or the entire machining extension has capabilities for what you're doing. Outside of that, it's Friday, guys. Go out there, get the day done, go home, get rested up. Like always, don't forget, you have to like, follow, and subscribe and leave comments on more content you would like to see in the next coming weeks.